Hi everyone, I am uh, Nathanael Koppa. I um, work with Alpine Linux. I work for Docker right now. And I will talk a little bit about Muscle Libc. So how many of you have used Alpine Linux one way or the other? <laughs> wow, that's a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. How many of you have used Alpine for more than five years? <coughs> oh, some of you. Cool. Ten years? <laughs> <laughs> good. Very good. Okay. Uh, the screen looks nice, I see. Mm. <laughs> so, um, a little bit about original design about Alpine Linux. It was designed to run without hard disk. That was the basic idea. So we uh, boot up, install the system in uh, RAM memory, and you could take out the boot media if you wanted. That means that you want the system to be very small. You don't want a bloaty system. That, that was the original idea. So use cases was like firewalls, VPNs, and that. But nowadays, it's uh, very popular for containers. Docker for the win. How many of you use Docker? Good. Good. I, I think it, it makes very much sense to run Alpine with, in containers because of, you know, when you run from RAM, you install it, boots up, and you destroy it when you power it down. That's pretty similar to what you do in a container. Disposable uh, systems, right? Let's move on. I, we started with the Gen 2. Uh, so we built Alpine with Gen 2 originally. And then we moved on uh, to make it self-hosting. What's interesting is we use Uslibc. How many is familiar with Uslibc? Good. So we used that originally. Busybox is a core thing. And in 2013, we had the last release with Uslibc. At that time, we had uh, almost 3,000 ports, 2,800. I just move on. There were some problems we used to live in. Uh, they required some patches to get it upstream, patches upstream. We had, at that time, I think 39 patches, and we couldn't get them upstream. One important thing was the threading issue, use slipsy. VLC crashed, or actually it hanged every time we exited due to a threading uh, implementation. It was not really fixable. So we thought we need to move on. Also, the code base is really ugly, sorry to say that. <laughs> but it, it's because it comes from Asian system uh, glibc. So it was not really nice to work with. So we saw this muscle libc thing. And on the website it says it's new, that's cool, it's lightweight, it's simple, and it's correct when it comes to, to security. So it matches pretty well with the goals with Alpine. There's an active development, clean, nice code base, stable ABI, usually it doesn't have that. They also provide some uh, sort of ABI compatibility with uh, GNU libc. Actually, the Adobe Flash player works in, uh, with MuscleLibc in, uh, in Alpine Linux, so, so it kind of works. So that was some of the nice things with MuscleLibc. So, of course, there were some worries, because uh, not many distros has done this before, build a complete distro with MuscleLibc. So, um, how much would break was a big question. We, um, how much work was it to, to patch things? Would upstream accept patches? Important questions. It's not as major as GNU libc, so how many hidden bugs are there that we didn't know about? We were, were worried about that, but switching to glibc was not really an option. So we, um, so we decided to just jump. And how did it go? Surprisingly well. 
uh, it's like uh, I think it's about four percent that was uh, specific muscle based. We have more patches, but not many patches actually to make it work. Most of it just works. I just move on because of time. So some of the <coughs> nice things with muscle Z experiences we had with uh, muscle libc is that uh, the code is very nice. We did some changes in muscle libc, submitted patches upstream. Very nice work with. Nice community. Um, they try to be correct. Sometimes that can be a bit annoying because you just want to move on. You have a real world application that breaks and you ask them and say, hey, why don't we just, you know, <laughs> and they say, no, we don't. <laughs> and you, it can be annoying, you know, but in most cases that is actually good. And, uh, and I uh, am thankful to the muscle uh, community that they are strict with that. And an interesting thing I noticed, when we patch software to make it work with MuscleLibc, almost always the code gets better. And, and I will show some experiences with that. <clears throat> and upstream, always, always, almost always they will accept patches to support because it's, uh, we send a patch, this breaks uh, POSIX and they will just accept it. There are a few Exceptions. The <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's true. System D is one of them. <laughs> so, if you want to do go this road, what do you need to watch out for? If you have an application that you want to build with MuscleMC, what what are the things you need to watch out for? There is no define muscle define. You cannot say you cannot test in in your C code. This runs on a muscle system. You cannot do that. Uh, the default stack size is 80k. Uh, there are some extensions in print format strings. There is no lazy binding. And there is one very nasty thing there. If you want to print error messages. And the DNS resolver. I will take them one by one. <coughs> so there is no muscle define. This is a patch from Mesa, they got upstream and they test, oh if you run, they did that before, if you run an Apple system or if you run FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, if you run Android, blah blah blah, <laughs> then you do that like this. Imagine if there were actually was a muscle define, what do you think would happen with the code here? <laughs> so because of they don't have that defined, they just say, okay, you know what, if you are not an exception, just assume you're following the standard, and then you can just remove all this garbage, and the code gets better. That, that's a proper way to do it. And another problem is the, the stack size 80k. Windows, I think, have one megabyte. OpenBSD is uh, 256k, maybe. FreeBSD 512, depending a bit on the architecture. GLibc default stack size for threads is 8 megabyte. <laughs> so if, if you spawn 10 threads in GLibc system, it will just use 80 megabyte, <laughs> doing nothing. This one is actually the smallest one I know, uh, default stack size. We had an interesting patch in Firefox. If you see at the out buffer, k out size, how big is that buffer that ends up in the stack? 128k. What do you think happen if you try to allocate 128k when you only have 80k? Goes boom. <laughs> so so Firefox started to crash, and this this was the issue. When I when I searched the uh, bugzilla for Firefox, I actually found another bug on Windows, which has one megabyte <laughs> stack size. They crashed for the same reason. So, so generally, you, you don't do that. You don't allocate 128k on the stack. That's, that's, uh, 
just don't do it, you know? That's kind of, kind of stupid <laughs> thing to do. So they accepted the patch. I think this went upstream. Uh, you don't see it, but they will allocate it on, on uh, the heap instead. <clears throat> There are some uh, issues with the uh, format strings. Um, in general, just read the man page. You will see, some, see something like this. GDC provides some extensions. If you see that, pay attention. Because if, if you use those extensions, it may work, it may not work. You have no guarantee that it will work. It may work on a recent MuzzleLibC. It maybe doesn't probably will not work in an older MuzzleLibC. So, so pay attention on, on the what the man page say. Watch out for the extensions. And we will take a look at this one. This one is really nasty. So you have this function to print error message. Can you guys see a problem with the two different versions up there? One returns an integer, the other one returns a string. How do you know which one do you have? <coughs> if you have a pre-compiled binary and you want to be ABI compatible, how do you know which one you get? You, you cannot really know that, actually. So, so that's um, kind of annoying. You shouldn't really use this. <laughs> Try to avoid it if, uh, if possible. I will, see, I will show you a patch that is from VMware. Not, not too old, actually. A VM, open VM tools crashed, and the reason was they tested that if you're running on Linux, then use the glibc version, you know? And at some point, someone find out that on some platform NLM, I don't know what that is, but Probably they, um, it runs on Linux, right? And oh, Android also runs on Linux. <laughs> so they, uh, you know, added different platforms. The real fix is check for the extension, the, the, the exception. And if you're not the exception, assume the standard behavior. That, that's the fix for that. How, how, we, how am I on time? How many minutes? Uh, you've got just about 12 minutes. Oh, then I don't need to stress. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Another issue you may have noticed already is the DNS resolver. The man page says uh, how things work. Muscle doesn't work the way the man page say. You need to be aware of that. So if you have this in this example, what would you expect? You might expect that uh, it would first uh, ask the 192 server, and after that, go to the next one. On MuscleLibc, it does not do that. It will actually send a request to all of them, and the first one responding will, will, uh, will uh, have, have the, uh, the answer. So uh, you might get surprises there. Uh, on the upside, you get faster uh, resolving, right? But the, the, oh, there are also other benefits doing this because then you cannot assume that you get different responses from different uh, DNS servers. If your software relies on different responses on different name servers, then you are likely doing something wrong. You shouldn't be, be doing that in the first place. So, so if you if your software runs on MuzzleLibc, you are doing good. <laughs> if if it doesn't, you're probably doing something wrong. The same thing with this search uh, keyword. It was added not too long ago uh, in MuzzleLibc. If you have this and you search, uh, you do ping foobar. Will you search for uh, foobarexample.com? Will you or not? Depends a little bit on your configuration, right? Uh, and it, it depends a little bit on who's giving you the response. But if you 
rely on that behavior, that you will first search for one and then the other one. What happens if the bar becomes a TDL, the top level domain, TLD? Well, things may break, right? And there are some documents from, from the DNS people saying uh, how do you avoid these kind of conflicts. And if you run MuscleLibc, you don't have this problem. If your software runs on MuscleLibc and it works, you don't have that problem. You can be sure that you always get the same response. Sorry? Uh, you have it, it, it will all, always only search for foobar. If you don't get response on that, it will not give you anything at all. So the search thing doesn't, doesn't work. It doesn't really work. You can actually add an option, an opt. Uh, there, there is an option for it. You can do a configuration option, and then it will always only search for the with the full full name. So it will always add the, the suffix, it will not do both of them, either one of them. That can cause some problems, so it's good to be aware of that. Some conclusions I have here at the end. Masalipsi, I, I would say it's ready for the main line. I would say it already is main line for some things. It works surprisingly well to build a complete distro. The most of the things just works. Firefox works. We do have some patches for it. LibreOffice works. Uh, it will work pretty well, actually. A lot of things works just out of the box. We have a Xen hypervisor working, built with the MuscleLibc. QMU works. We have a lot of things that just. Sorry. GDK also works in the world. Open. GDK. GDK. GDK, yes, yes. Works. Sort of, at least. <laughs> 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 and uh, when you need to adjust your software, when you need to patch some software to make it work with MuscleLibc, almost always the code ends up better. So, so that's uh, kind of a nice thing because it improves the overall code quality in the open source uh, community. So my conclusion is, MuscleLibc is just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any questions? Here we have many questions. Yes? Yeah, uh, I think it's good to have more than one Libc, but you said earlier uh, GLibc is not an option for Alpine. Why is it not? <coughs> because it was... Why, um, why is GLibc, was glibc not an option for uh, Alpine Linux? Back at that time, we were running from RAM. It was too big. Okay. It was just, just too big. That, that's, uh, we didn't want that big. And also, uh, if, if we went to, to glibc, what, what different would uh, Alpine be from others? You, know, you, could just, you could just run Ubuntu or Red Hat or whatever, you know? So, um, yes? Is uh, MuscleLibc faster than GLibc? Is MuscleLibc compared to yeah, system at home? Because you say there's some tracking issues with GLibc and MicroLibc. Yes. So many differences in legacy. Yes, that's, that's a good question. Uh, is MuscleLibc faster than GLibc? Depends on your workload. Some things is faster, some things I expect is not. <coughs> but I don't know really, uh, overall. Can you give an example of a workload on which it is fast? I don't know. <laughs> I really, I, I haven't done much. Does anybody know workload where MuscleLibc is faster? Lots of dynamic linking. Lots of dynamic linking. Yeah, that's a, uh, I believe that. There's a benchmark page, uh, I think on the Muscle website, where they uh, list a few functions and benchmarking with different libcs. I think there are also some sort of right. algorithms where it's faster. Yes, I don't know how, how up to date that is. I think it's pretty old, actually. 
but but there are some. Uh, <laughs> the main things that are known to be slower are the lack of highly optimized men copy. Sorry. The main things known to be slower are a lack of highly optimized men copy, which may okay. make a difference somewhere. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you really care, use your own. Yes, optimized mem copy can be the, the situation where it's slower. In, yes. In your example here, you got rid of the reentrant version of stir error and just went with the non reentrant one. Yes. That doesn't necessarily seem safe in some cases. Uh, actually, it's, it is reentrant. The even even the. This one, you mean? Well, the one, yeah. Yes, it is. But the 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 problem is that there are two different that they are reentrant. Right. They are exactly the same thing. Right. But they just return different things, so you may un end up with one one with a POSIX version, or you may uh, end up with a glibc version. Right. And in in the patch, it's reentrant. Oh, I see. So 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 it's uh, it, it should be safe. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Any more questions? Why did you forget the ID to only run in RAP? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. uh, because why why we only run in RAM? Okay, why, why don't you why you don't run anymore only in RAM? Uh, uh, why we don't? Why did you stop running only in RAM? Actually, we support that. We oh. still we still support that. So so the live CD will run from RAM. You can in theory boot up the live CD. Take out the CD and and it will continue run. So it runs uh, it runs uh, still uh, from from memory, but we support disks now as well. So you can install it on disk as well. Like you said, the user community is usually pretty good. And the question is, I think, in your experience, how long does it take you to get in a non-trivial patch? Like how much bike shedding is actually going on? Because you know <laughs> some loops seem to have. <laughs> so, how much bike shedding? Uh, how much trouble is it to get in a patch in MassLibc? In my experience, well, the times where I needed a patch in MassLibc, we had a specific problem. Then I have asked them, "What do you guys think about that on IRC?" And normally, it's they who come up with a solution. And then I make the patch. That that's the way <laughs> they do it. <laughs> so 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 that that has been that has been uh, not not a big issue. The times where it can be issue is if you want to hack something, do something ugly, then they will say no, we don't want to do that. If you have a good reason for it, they m might accept it. But um, normally, um, it's not a big problem uh, in my experience to get patches in there. Do we have more time? Yes, back in the back. Uh, you mentioned OpenJDK runs Soda with um, using. Uh, can, you, can you explain why you use Soda? Uh, I, I don't have much experience with uh, OpenJDK, so, so I don't know really. I have heard that you need uh, the dynamic linking, um, sorry, the lazy loading with, with that, which does not work. It's not supported with MuscleLibc. It's not supported at all at this point. So you might get problems with it if, 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 you, if you depend on that. But at least Hello World works. Um, <laughs> so the, the applications I have come, come into works. It may work, it may not. I don't know really. Are there better options for running Java with um, The problem with Java is that they, uh, Oracle provides uh, pre-compiled binaries against glibc. So it, they only support that. If you do try to do something else, it might work, it might not. You can probably pay Oracle to support libc, but you have to pay them. We had actually an issue with that. Someone asked for it, and uh, the response was, you have to pay uh, Oracle guys to do it. I run multiple applications on uh, uh, OpenJDK and Alpine and uh, doesn't have any problem so far. Uh, actually, I didn't know that there's some problem. Uh, and uh, there are uh, also big complex applications like Alpresco and uh, it seems that it uh, runs fine. Um, 
for a bit of it's not a big issue. Uh, big issue are people who just meet since on are running for Oracle VDK uh, on Alpine. It's just not possible because Oracle does not provide binaries on Alpine for Castle or on the for Yeah, it uh, doesn't work. Thank you. So, so most things will work. Most things will will just work. Uh, so uh, we Say. have a package for uh, JRuby. Uh, Jacob, is, uh, time time is out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone.